Hi, and welcome to lesson two, where we will consider wave examples. We're going to start easy in one dimension in our first step by considering standing waves. You are familiar from, with standing waves from probably your high school studies. Here we will uh, just cover them briefly and do a little bit of math to show them, to show you how we can produce standing waves. So standing waves are also known as stationary waves. And uh, so far we have been tra uh, considering only traveling waves. So we are considering uh, right traveling waves and we describe them as follows. We had our wave function psi r, which was a function of uh, the space coordinate x and time coordinate t. And for example, if it's a simple harmonic like we're considering now, it was given by this form, where this negative in front of omega t signified that the wave was right traveling. If we change that sign to positive, then the wave becomes left traveling wave. On the other hand, standing wave or stationary waves look something like this. So despite their name, they're not really standing, they're not really stationary, they are still moving, they are evolving in time, but they are not really traveling left or right. As you can see here, at this point is uh, um, at the same spatial coordinate x, it's just moving up and down with time. So the question now is, how do we describe such a function, how do we, such a wave function, and how do we produce it? So, again, let's consider two traveling waves, but they are traveling in opposite directions. Here, our right traveling wave, given by this um, blue curve, is given by this equation here. And we've got our left traveling wave, which is the orange curve, given by this equation here, where the only difference is that um, its uh, frequency omega is scaled by 0.1. And at the bottom, what we are plotting with the green curve is the resultant superposition of these waves. So what you can see just barely is that if you track the motion of one of these peaks that's going up and down and up and down, you can also see that it's still propagating to the right. So this is not quite the uh, standing wave that we are looking for. However, if we actually set the waves to be this identical in terms of their amplitude and in terms of their frequencies, only traveling in opposite directions, then you can see that uh, we are producing the standing wave. So a standing wave is a result of two interfering waves, two identical waves which are traveling in opposite directions. Now, how do we actually write this mathematically? So let's just superpose our two waves, our right traveling wave, our left traveling wave. We do a simple sum between them. Now what we do is we expand the uh, sign terms using trigonometric identities. So sine of kx minus omega t becomes this first line here, is sine kx times cosine omega t minus cosine kx sine omega t. And similarly for the other term, the left traveling wave, with the only difference being that here, we, instead of a minus, we have a plus. And you can see that the cosine kx terms, they cancel, and what we get is the following. 2a times sine kx cosine omega t. So let's spend a little bit of time looking at this expression. You can see that this is not a traveling wave anymore. The spatial component of the wave kx is separate from the time component of the wave given by omega t. On top of that, we, the resulting wave is not, uh, does not have the am amplitude of a, but 2a. So this is a new amplitude, and this is a result of constructive interference between the two traveling waves, the right traveling wave and the left traveling wave. The second term, kx, is giving us the spatial variation of the uh, wave and gives us the stationary wave form. While the time component given by cos omega t is really just modulating um, our amplitude. So this is what makes the wave uh, go up and down, up and down. So here we've, we took a snapshot of uh, the standing wave in time. And let's do a little bit of anatomy on the wave. So at, uh, at these points, you can see that the waveform is always zero. Regardless of uh, at what time you are, either you are at this time where you reach the maximum displacement, or at some later time where the wave is on its way uh, traveling 
this part is traveling down, this part is going up, always you can see that these points are zero. These points are very special and therefore we call them nodes. They're the nodes of the standing wave. On the other hand, there are those points which travel and reach the furthest away from, from uh, the um, zero displacement. They reach the maximum amplitude. These are the orange, uh, orange uh, uh, points here. And because they, they are the opposite of nodes, we call them antinodes of the standing wave. Now, we said that we need two waves to produce standing wave. Is this strictly speaking true? Not quite. We can use some tricks. So before we started with two waves, one right propagating, one left propagating, and we said that the resultant superposition is a standing wave. Now let's take the left propagating wave away and see, can we still produce, and see how we can still produce a standing wave. What we can do is we can use a little trick and use reflection. So what we do is we put some surface, solid surface in here and use it to bounce this right traveling wave back. And uh, how reflection works is that you, the amplitude of the traveling wave remains unchanged, the frequency remains unchanged, however, however it, the wave flips, so the phase flips um, compared to the incoming wave. So what we do is we produce a left traveling wave represented by this orange curve that then can interfere with the right traveling wave. And the result is a standing wave like that. Now, we have to stress one thing here, that the, wave, uh, that the wavelength of the standing wave so far is unconstrained. It means we, it can be anything. And the wavelength is related by the wave number, this k, by the following formula, where k is 2 pi over lambda. And we can put any k that we want, it can be an integer k, or we can, it can be a, a decimal like 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 10.7, anything will result in a standing wave. And this is generally true for uh, waves which are traveling in free space, or if we have a single wave that's a, a reflecting of a surface producing standing wave. So now we ask the question, what happens if we have two fixed points, one, let's say, placed at x equals zero, and the other one placed at x equals l? And we can put a string just to get a better imagination of what's going on. We can put a string connecting these two surfaces. And then what we do is we hit the string. So imagine it's a guitar string or any other string instrument. This will produce a traveling wave on the string. And after some time, many bounces between the, the uh, right surface and the left surface, uh, the wave will reach some kind of stable behavior. So after some transient, it will become a standing wave because the right traveling and the left traveling waves will interfere with each other. So we know that it will have the following form. It's going to be given by this uh, wave function, a times sine kx times cosine omega t. But now we have to be very careful because there is one constraint, and that's that at the point where the string is touching the surface, the string does not move. For all the time, it's just fixed at those points. It's not allowed to move. So we want to see how this uh, boundary condition affects the form of the standing wave. So we said we've got these two boundary conditions mathematically uh, expressed as follows. The first boundary condition is that psi at zero and any time t has to be zero, and also psi at position l uh, at, at any time t has to be zero. So let's plug it into our standing wave equation, and we can see that the first condition is always satisfied, because if we substitute zero into our psi, sine of zero is always zero, therefore the entire expression is zero and our boundary condition is satisfied for every time. What about our second condition? Well, we can say that, what about, we can play with this term here, cos omega t. When is this part zero and hence the entire expression zero? We can solve this equation, cos omega t is equal to zero. And we find that at some uh, certain times, given by this expression where omega t is an integer multiple of pi over two, then our uh, condition is satisfied. But this is not good enough because we require the boundary condition two to be satisfied for all time. Therefore, we have to look at the sine, sine, uh, um, sine term in our expression for the standing wave.
So when we substitute uh, L, capital L, into our standing wave expression, we have the following requirement. We require that sine K times capital L is zero. And this is true when KL is an integer multiple of pi. We can solve for K, and what we get is that um, the wave function and therefore the wave number are constrained. In fact, the wave function of a standing wave with two fixed ends is given by 2L over N. So here we can see that not any uh, wave function is allowed, not any K is allowed, if you fix uh, both ends of your string or if you constrain your traveling wave to a, some small region. So, for example, when n equals to 1, we get the following shape. We can fit exactly one half of a wave function uh, into our region between the two surfaces. So, we've got this nice, we've got two nodes, both at the ends of the string, and we've got one antinode right in the middle between them. And you can see that if we actually extend it by another L, we um, complete the wave. Therefore, the lambda is given by 2 times L. And this case is called the fundamental. We can start increasing n, for example, n is equal to 2, and then we've got the following shape, and we see that lambda is now L, and this is called the first harmonic, and then we can go to higher and higher n's. And we can see that for general n, we've got n plus 1 nodes, that means n plus 1 points on the string which are not moving, and we've got n antinodes. And for general n, our, uh, as we said, our uh, wavelength is given by 2L divided by n. So let's summarize. We have seen that standing waves are a one-dimensional, uh, um, very simple one-dimensional example uh, of a wave. And they are given by the fact that the peaks of the wave are not traveling. So the wave is evolving time, in time, but the peaks are not uh, traveling in space. They can be produced um, by superposition of two traveling waves that, that are traveling in opposite directions. And if we um, look at the, how the wave, how the different points of the wave are behaving in time, we see that there are points which are not displaced, these are called the nodes, and points which reach maximum displacement, these are called the antinodes of a standing wave. And furthermore, if we restrict our wave to be only evolving in some small region, then we are also restricting the wavelength that's allowed uh, for the uh, standing wave. So this is our first, um, first example of quantization. And you will see this phenomenon again and again as you uh, continue with your studies.